In chapter four, the entire chapter is going to be focused on quadratic functions. And today we're going to talk about quadratic functions and everything you see today is going to be in what we call vertex form. So today is going to be easy. It will get more difficult as we continue on. Now the good news is parabolas are going to behave a lot like absolute value problems behaved where you have a vertex to start with. So let's talk about what a parabola is. A parabola is the graph of a quadratic function. Now you might say, well what's a quadratic function? It's something that has some type of x squared in it. And that is the next fill in the blank. It has some type of x squared in it. Now vertex form is the first thing you're going to learn about. Vertex form is a certain way of writing the equation um, and it usually looks like this. It will be f of x or y equals, there will be a number, there will be a set of parentheses, the set of parentheses will be squared. You'll do x minus h and then plus k in the back. It should look very familiar to you as the absolute value, one, absolute value ones did. The absolute value ones just had, you know, absolute value signs. The axis of symmetry is the line that the quadratic folds around. In other words, it's like the middle line, the va straight vertical line that you can fold it on. The vertex of a parabola is where, the, is where the line of the symmetry and the graph intersect. Now that is, that is the technical definition. Really, it's just the top or the bottom of the graph. All right, that's the easier part. Take a look at this is the most basic formula of a quadratic you can get the most basic form. Um, the reason it's the most ba basic is because it's just x squared. Notice the axis of symmetry is on the origin and the vertex is also on the origin. So it's just a u-shaped graph. Moving on. We're going to start very, very, very simple. Let's say we have f of x equals ax squared. Notice there's nothing else where a is simply the coefficient of x squared. Um, so here you go. If a is negative, it goes upside down. If a is bigger than 1, it gets very skinny, and that's called a vertical stretch. And if a is between 0 and 1, it gets kind of fat. It looks like it's been stepped on. That shouldn't be no new to you. You should remember that. That's the same thing as absolute values. All right. Note, when there is nothing being added or subtracted, The middle point, which is called the vertex, will be 0, 0. And that's only when nothing is being added or subtracted. If I were you, if you're making flashcards as you move along, I would put that on the front of a flashcard so on the back you know what the vertex is automatically. Let's look at problem 1. What is the graph of f of x equals 1 half x squared? See this 1 half? That means it's going to be vertically compressed. You should remember that from absolute values. Now take a look at what I encouraged you to do. Pick x's that work well with the denominator when squared. Plug in at least five x's, try to get the mirror images, plot your points. Take a look at my chart that I'm going to make. I know, because nothing's being added or subtracted, I know my vertex is going to be 0, 0, because nothing's being added or subtracted. When I make my x, y chart, I like to put my vertex smack dab in the middle. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to plug in numbers that surround 0. I'm going to pick multiples of 2, negative 2 and negative 4. I pick multiples of 2 because the denominator was 2, positive 2 and positive 4. Now we need to plug them into the equation. So we'll do 1 half the quantity negative 2 squared. So that's really 1 half times 4, which is just 2. And then we move on. 1 half times negative 4 quantity squared. Well, that's like half of 16, and half of 16 is 8. Now, these will be mirror images all the time, as long as you do it right. Again, half of 4 is 2. Remember that the negatives became positive because we squared them. And half of 4 squared, which is half of 16, is 8. Now, I plot my points on my graph. So, 0, 0 should be in the middle. I kind of like to plot that one first. Um, over 2, up 2. 
and over 4 up 8. All right, do the same thing for these negative points. Left 2, up 2. Look at that parabola coming. And then left 4, up 8. Notice it's a perfect reflection, okay? Graph your parabola. It will be a U-shape, not a V-shape anymore. Quadratics are a U-shape, not a V-shape. Okay? Notice my axis of symmetry is where the line folds, and it would be this line right here. It's the origin. You see it? So I write axis symmetry is x equals 0. Let's try this again. The got it. What is the graph of the quantity positive 2 x squared? See the positive 2? That means it's going to be vertically stretched. But which of these graphs is vertically stretched? This one's flipped upside down. This one is not it. That's the graph of negative 2 x squared, but not positive 2 x squared. B is our answer. B is the graph of positive 2 x squared. Now, if you made an xy chart, your xy chart would be 0, 0 in the middle because nothing's being added or subtracted. And because we don't have a denominator, you should write that down. You should pause the video, write that down. Because we don't have a denominator, I can pick my normal x's, and when I plug them in, I would simply plug them into my equation. You know, I get out my answers of 1, 2, and that would be 2 times 4, so that would be 8. And if you look here, you will see that this graph surely does match this xy chart. The got it is not only a fraction, it is also a negative. So what the negative thing is going to do is it's going to rotate it around the x-axis. So in other words, it's going to be flipped. Okay? Now what does the one-third do? The one-third is going to vertically compress it, which means it's going to look like it's been stepped on. Let's make an xy chart, please. Nothing is being added or subtracted. Zero, zero is my middle. Notice I have a denominator of 3, so I'm going to pick negative 3 and negative 6, and positive 3 and positive 6. Now I will plug them in. So this is a negative one-third times three quantity squared. In other words, what is negative one-third of nine? The answer is negative three. Now do the same thing with six. Negative one-third of six squared. That's really like what's negative one-third of 36. Well, we make one-third of 36 is 12, so this is negative 12. As long as you did those bottom ones right, these will be a perfect reflection of the bottom. So let's plot our point. Okay, let's go left 6, down 12. Now go left 3, down 3. Uh, zero, zero, we already did. Write three down three. And be careful when you count this one out. It's going to be down 12. All right. Once you get your, po once you get your points plotted, connect to make your U shape. And you have a perfect quadratic that has been flipped and vertically compressed. Part B. What can you say about the graph um, f of x equals a of x squared if a, is, if a is negative? What you can say about that is that it has been rotated, let's use our real words, rotated around, excuse me, not rotated, let's reflect it. Reflected. Reflected around the x-axis. Okay, reflected around your x-axis. We are now going to move on, and we are going to talk about moving it left and right and up and down. Now, depending on how well you guys learned um, your rules of your absolute values, the rules for quadratics are exactly the same. So left and right, if you move it, you know, if it says positive, if it's plus, three, you would move it to the left three. If it's minus three, you move it to the right three. Same thing for up and down. If it's plus three, you move it up. If it's minus three, you move it down. 
Again, this will work just like it did for absolute value problems. The number associated with x gets the horizontal movement and the number outside gets the vertical movement. The axis of symmetry is the equation of the line that we could fold the parabola around. That's not new. It's the x, here's the hard, here's the part, if you just remember, it's really easy though. It's the x value of your vertex. Let's take a look at problem two. 